I've been working on a quilt using the crosshatch method. And you can see I've quilted quite a bit of this. And looking at the screen, see, it doesn't look very well. It doesn't look very matched up. But that's not the case. If I look at the quilt, it's matched up. And this is the way it's going to look when you're doing the quilting. So in reality, I don't need all of this. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of this stuff. Just delete it off the screen because I don't I don't need everything. All I need is the last row that I have quilted. So this is the last row that I quilted right there. I have the machine needle sitting right at this point there. I'm going to do a relocate, shift all to one point. It's going to tell me to click on a known point, turn on my end snap so it'll snap to that. It snapped to that point, left click, click yes, and now my machine is relocated, but I'm going to check to make sure that the bottom edge of that row that I finished before I shut down is in fact lined up correctly. You notice I have a spacing between the rows and I'll fill that in as I quilt and roll. I have to fill in this space here but I can't do that until I quilt this row. So I'll do that. Okay, I have the needle sitting at that point right there, but now I'm not concerned that that point's not shifted to the left. I'm not going to move that. I'm just going to leave it like it is. But the problem is, you can see the points down below where the horizontal crosshair is. And that's an easy fix. Select all. Hold down the it only have to move a little bit, so I'll hold down the Alt key and press the up arrow key. And I'll move that up to where it is right on where the crosshair is. Now, that's all I'm going to do with that. I'll escape to get out of that function. And I also want to know is how well is this point lined up? with every other point. Is this truly rolled straight and is that all those points are they on that line? I'll do that by using a function that will let me use the channel lock. I went all the way to the right side of the quilt and I used that point with the needle right at that peak and I set the channel lock. I just used the based mode and set the channel lock and then I brought the machine along this line checking and I'm right at that point. It is right on the way I want it, want it to be. So I'll continue bringing the machine over to the left to check all of these points to see how well they're lined up. Okay, so that shows right there that when I got here, this tip is a little bit below the needle. It's that much below right there. So it, it didn't roll perfect, but it's going to be close enough that I'm not going to be concerned about it. I used the measuring tape and I measured from that point right there down to this beginning top edge of the next row to quilt. And you can see it's 1.01 .01 inch, so that's perfect for my spacing. That's what I need. 
whenever I figured the spacing on this, I figured that it needed one inch of spacing. So that's how I did that. I used Corey's method of determining this spacing. You can see I have this one repeat selected. It says the height is 6.9, so to me that's 7 inches. I'll bring up my, yeah, my calculators down here on the bar. I'll just click the calculator, bring it over here, and since this is, I could call this 7 inches, 7. Now, I have to look here and see how many full diamonds I have. I have 1, 2, 3, and then here is half of a diamond. Okay, so that means I have 3 and a half diamonds. That's how many I have. So I'll take the 7 inches, divide it by, and this is the divide symbol, divide by 3.5, 3 and a half, and gives me 2. Okay, in his method he divided that by 2. Well, I already know that's 1, but I'll divide it by 2, and we see 1. So that is my spacing. When I set this up in repeat patterns, I put in the vertical spacing as a positive one. That gave me this space between the rows. That's how I did that. So now I'll just quilt out the next row. Then I will use what's quilted on the quilt and the row, the top edge of this row to fill this in. I have the pattern on the screen to do the fill in for between the uh, row that was quilted up here and the row that I just finished quilting. I have that all. Now, here's what you can't do. You can't pay any attention to what you see on the screen. You have to go by just clicking the points between the two sections that have been quilted. So I'll quilt this out and I'll also follow along with it to make sure that it hits the points the way I want it to hit. That's just something that I always do. CS7 quit working, so I had to uh, shut down everything, had to restart CS7, bring this project back up. I had already placed all of these uh, points on the quilt, but I had to uh, delete what I had on there. I had to re-click all the points to make sure everything was going to stitch out correctly. So now I'm ready to stitch this row of uh, P to P line points. Now you notice that right now the, it says it's going to start down here. I have two options. I can select all of these rows and toggle them as sewn, which I don't want to do that. Or I can select this row of P to P and go up here to set sew order, make this number 42, change this to zero, and click the set so order again. Now it says it's going to start there. So I'll stitch this row out. <laughs> 